Hello there, uh, this is Dr. Vahid Aryadust, and in this presentation I'm going to demonstrate uh, how to do a t-test, an independent samples t-test. Well, as you know, independent samples t-tests are used to uh, investigate the relationships between two mean scores. Uh, the two mean scores are from two completely independent measures, two completely independent samples. Uh, for example, in the first example here, uh, we want to investigate uh, the hypothesis that uh, female students, that which uh, which is actually group one, um, achieve higher vocabulary scores compared with their male counterparts, which uh, we have coded as group zero. So we've got two variables here, gender, which is the independent variable, and vocabulary uh, scores, which is the dependent variable. Uh, therefore, the independent variable has to have only two levels, whereas the uh, dependent variable has to have uh, it has to be interval on, a, on an interval scale. Example two is similar, where we want to test the hypothesis that uh, whether there is uh, any differences between genders um, in terms of their uh, writing ability. So we're going to have two variables here. Again, gender becomes our dependent variable, and this time around we have writing, which can become, which will be our um, gender is the independent variable. Sorry, and and writing is our dependent variable. Uh, again, our dependent variable is on on an interval scale. Uh, by the same w uh, token, you can create other independent variables like. Uh, gender or uh, socioeconomic status if it has two only only two levels of difference and also other kinds of uh, uh, dependent variables uh, example three is a bit different from one and two we want to test the hypothesis that students attending grammar classes regularly that's group one achieve higher grammatical scores or have higher grammatical abilities than those who skipped uh, more than five sessions which uh, we have arbitrarily uh, or randomly just coded them as group two here we've got two variables again the independent variable is attendance and has two levels one and two and because this is nominal you could actually say it's one and two or you could code it in a different way for example zero and one and grammatical ability grammatical ability is the interval dependent variable uh, there are a few concepts which I would like to elaborate before I move to uh, statistical analysis using SPSS. The first concept is the concept of uh, independent t-test assumptions. There are four assumptions. In some textbooks you might find a lot more assumptions, but I think these four are quite uh, representative of the main assumptions of t-test, which should not be violated as much as possible. The first one is the level of measurement of dependent variables which has to be continuous or interval which I just explained before. The second one is the normality of the dependent variables. In other videos I have explained how to check the normality of dependent variables. If you're interested I, I uh, strongly recommend that you watch those videos if, if you have some time to spare. And then the sample size is also important. Uh, a lot of authors recommend that the sample size should be at least 30 or above 30. Uh, the larger the sample size, the more confidence you have in the results that you obtain. And finally, it's equality of variances. The equality of variances is, is important uh, because if it's violated, then the usual or the normal independent samples t-test is not uh, very much reliable. And then you have to do another kind of t-test, which is called uh, a Welsh test, which uh, luckily uh, SPSS also can do for us, which I will show in a minute. Finally, we have degrees of freedom. Uh, which is basically uh, the amount of information uh, um, that your data provides so that it can be used to estimate the differences between two groups, for example, males and females, uh, between two groups. So um, this degrees of freedom is, is determined by the sample size. As you can see in the formula, we've got n1 minus 1 plus n2 minus 2. So the sample size for males minus 1 plus sample size for females uh, minus 1 again gives you 
the degrees of freedom. Uh, therefore, the larger the sample size, actually the more information you have about the distribution of your variables. And um, the higher your, your confidence uh, that uh, you can extrapolate the results to a population. In other words, you can, you can extrapolate uh, the differences between the males in the sample and the females in the sample to the females and the, the males in the population. That's, the, that's a good thing uh, f uh, about the, uh, I mean, a large degrees of freedom or in other words a large sample size. So let's go to SPSS and see what we can do here. First of all, uh, I'm gonna here um, stress that my, depend, uh, my independent variable is gonna be gender. And gender has two levels, male for zero uh, and female, which has been coded as one. Okay, let's go to analyze, <coughs> analyze. Uh, compare means and go all the way down to paired samples t uh, sorry independent samples t test and now we have this dialog box which opens uh, which uh, actually has got only you know two slots one of the slices is test variables and that's your dependent variable and then independent variable which goes to your grouping variable here so let's first find the variable that we want to analyze I think for this presentation I am gonna go through uh, I'm gonna choose vocabulary that's one variable and um, situational writing that's the second one so we're gonna actually there's no limitation on the number of variables here uh, from what I know if you've got let's say 100 variables uh, you can just uh, you know um, transfer all the variables to this side of the panel then you can uh, choose gender here and move it here and you see you have got two question marks here which indicates that you need to define the groups as you saw I have only two groups group 0 and group 1 and there will be the two groups that I'm gonna investigate and for the options in bootstrapping you don't really need to change anything for the confidence of interval since we're we're gonna set the alpha value at 0 0.05 this 95 will be fine but if you want to change the alpha value to 0 0.01 you have to change this to 0 uh, to 99 percent but for this presentation let's stick with the more conventional 95 percent continue uh, so i didn't change anything actually in the options then just click ok and there you are first of all some descriptive statistics uh, for vocabulary first for vocabulary uh, as you see the the number of uh, male participants is 897 uh, slightly more than the number of uh, males in the other variable and we've got 919 females in in the sample for vocabulary scores they're not these two variables are not exactly the same in terms of the gender distribution the mean scores uh, here uh, let me just uh, draw some um, boxes here around the mean scores. So the mean score for males is this 5.03 whereas that for females is 5.55 there's obviously a difference between the two and these are the standard deviations but the question is is this difference statistically significant or not so you can actually uh, test that. Um, in, in this box, in this table right at the bottom, let me just pull this to the left hand side a little bit good. Uh, at the bottom uh, you see uh, two main areas. One is the Levine's test of equal equality of variances. Let me just refresh your memory. Like I said, the equality of variances is one of the assumptions of uh, independent samples t-test. If it's violated then uh, the usual or conventional uh, independent samples t-test is not applicable. What we are aiming for is a kind of Levine's test of equality variance which is not significant but here it's significant that means that the, the variances uh, between the variances of male and female subgroups are significantly different from each other so there is a significant difference between the two and therefore this assumption is uh, is violated therefore we need to use a Welsh t-test or Welsh test and the Welsh test is right here uh, let me just draw 
a Welsh test is right here equality of variance not assumed so Welsh just does not assume equality of variances and anything that can be found in this um, in this box uh, is actually what you need to interpret so therefore uh, the the statistics which are provided on on the first row are not applicable in our case uh, because of the violation of the assumption now let's, uh, so now I'm gonna focus on like I said, there are two. Uh, sorry, there are two uh, ma main areas. This is one area, which I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, interpret in a minute for you, and this is the Levine's test area. Just highlighting it for you, right here. It has an F and 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 a significant value significance value, which is uh, interpreted like normal p values. However, the difference is that if if this value is smaller than 0 0.05, well, well then you, you this this row is not what we need to what we can interpret because the equality of variances has been violated. That assumption has been violated. So we're gonna we're gonna uh, look into this section. Uh, the t value is minus 5.063. Uh, three six, uh, with a degrees of freedom. So degrees of freedom uh, here, uh, unlike the degrees of freedom in uh, the first row, where the, equal the equality of variances is assumed, is non-integer. But this is this is an integer. There there's a slight difference in the uh, calculation of the the degrees of freedom for this row. But that's that's not really the, the um, you know something that we need to discuss in this in this video. So uh, both p-values, even if you compare them, both p-values are very significant. And if you double-click on it, um, this is the p-value we're talking about. It's, it's, let me just pull this to this side. This is the p-value we're talking about. It's extremely small, and so is this one. They're actually very similar to each other. So uh, I'm going to close this. Um, then there is a mean difference of minus 0.520. Uh, that's what we just calculated. We could calculate above um, with some uh, rounding up and down, which is slightly different from that, uh, from the differences between the two, just slightly, really. Um, or is it? It might be the same. Um, anyway, so, and, and there is a standard error differences between. Uh, a standard error of differences for this mean score. Now we also have a 95% confidence interval of the differences. Uh, in short, this confidence interval shows uh, the interval of the range within which the true mean, this, this, this is not actually the true mean, this is the mean differences between males and females. But this is supposedly a representative of the population mean and that's what we call the true mean. So an interval or a range uh, within which the true mean is likely to lie. So um, we sh if you look at the this interval which ranges from uh, minus 0 0.721 to minus 0 0.318 we should be able to find this mean as well. So we we're, luckily we can find that. This mean actually falls within this this range. The smaller this mean uh, um, the smaller the margin of error, so the, sorry, the, the smaller the uh, confidence interval, the smaller the uh, margin of error. So um, th that that will be much better. In other words, to have a small to get to get a small interval, uh, confidence interval. Uh, one last thing, which I I want to also here show and quickly elaborate is is it is the second one the situation writing uh, score again as you see the assumption of Levine's test of equality uh, of equality of variances has been violated as the Levine's test shows that's uh, 0 0.09 uh, 009 that's a very small p-value therefore uh, the situational there is no equality of variance for females and males in this uh, in this variable either therefore we have to go down to the second row here I and we look looking look at the variables. This is the Welsh test, like I said, 
four. So uh, the the mean difference is minus two point six eight uh, five, and the confidence interval is um, kind of small. Really, it's not too large. Anyway, the p-value shows that there is a significant difference between males and females. In other words, females have significantly higher uh, scores in gra grammatical ability as represented by the situational writing task and also in their vocabulary ability as represented by their uh, vocabulary scores. In another video, I'm going to discuss uh, the effect size because effect size is, is very important we have already learned that there is a significant difference between these two uh, uh, two groups in these two variables and we need to know the magnitude of this difference um, thank you very much uh, if you like the video please give it a like and uh, please subscribe to the channel have a good day